Good morning, good morning, good morning. This is Jeremiah's J-Man Monero, J-Man Speaks, coming to you live and direct. Listen, I'm re-recording an intro here for the YouTube because I decided to use the Jay-Z intro on the Facebook and they stopped my stream, so I missed the beginning part of my uh, broadcast, so I'm just going to redo it, tell you a little bit about what we're talking about today. Today we're talking about how to get listings or how to get sellers, how to get sellers using the current inventory of buyers that you're working with. Uh, now, first step to this process is going to be to take inventory of your buyers, be very specific of what they're looking for uh, and the area that you're looking, that they're looking so that you can work backwards and find them, the home of your dream, their dreams, using predictive analytics. So here's all the information. Check it out. Make sure to like, subscribe. We love you and make it a great day. Facebook, make sure to share the stream. Oh, good morning. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. Oh, let's get serious, folks. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Welcome to 18 Fridays. Ask the experts anything meaningful Fridays. That's right, and today we're talking about how to get sellers with the buyers that you already have, right? So we all have inventories of buyers. Let's call it that buyer inventory, buyers that we are currently working with. Uh, now, we've been gone for a couple of weeks because we did take a little uh, vacation, 10-day vacation. So that's why if you're watching me on Facebook, uh, my backdrop, I still needed the palm trees. I still needed the sun. It was a rough morning, y'all. It was like my door froze open. Okay, I, I know for those of you who are watching this from the south or the west or the southwest, someplace where you got sun and you don't have ice and cold like we do, you don't understand what we're going through. Uh, I opened my door, I put my book back in the back seat, and then the freaking door wouldn't close. I could not believe it. Uh, but what I need from you, if you're watching on the Facebook, just put where you're watching from today and give me one question you have about real estate. Anything. Because this is called Ask the Experts Anything Meaningful Friday. Let me pull my, get my mic off, off, off camera here, make sure. Is that okay? So if you're watching this on the Facebook, if you can still hear me okay, let me know. Uh, if uh, I need to, I will pull the mic back up. But give me one question. Just one question. Allow me to enter. I wonder if Facebook stopped my stream. I don't think so. But you always run the risk when you did a little Jay-Z in the morning. You know what I'm saying? Good morning to Tech Evangelist. Sabrina Lowry's in the building. Nice to see you, your name, at least. Oh, Houston, Texas. Oh, girl, you got some heat, I bet, still. I'm up here in the freezing cold. All right, I'm going to get right to it. It's kind of strange. Live streams have been low on participation this week. I'm not going to take it personal. Uh, but I will just keep on moving because we can always repurpose anything that we do, uh, whether there's an audience or not. So today we're talking about how to find sellers with buyers that you're currently working with. And so what I'm going to do, I'm going to cut to my other camera. So step one of this process is you need to take inventory of your buyers, but be very specific of the buyers that you're working with and what they are looking for. Okay. So I'm going to cut to my whiteboard over here on the, on the Instagram. I'm going to cut you to my whiteboard over here. Let's see if this works. There you go. There you go. I guess that'll work more or less, right? Okay. So do your buyer inventory. What I mean by that is, let's say, I'm going to give three buyers that I'm working with right now. Buyer number one is looking for a three-bedroom. Colonial, thousand square feet, square feet um, in Noda, which is a neighborhood, Park Ave, North Winton, etc. Right? That's the, the neighborhood, the criteria, and then under 250, 250K cash buyer. Okay, making sense so far? Making sense? 
Second thing you're going to do, I mean, the second buyer, let's say I'm going to give you another example. They're looking for a four bedroom home. They could care less what style it is because inventory is like that. Four bedroom home, uh, 2,000 square feet. 2,000 or newer, okay, in Greece, Webster, where else did we look, um, whatever, okay, they're also a cash buyer, and they're looking up to 350, okay, okay, and then I have another one, but just so, for demonstration purposes, this works. You see what I'm saying here. Now, what am I going to do with this information? Can't see if you're sitting on Instagram because I have the camera turned around. Uh, but what I'm going to do with this information is then I'm going to do a search. Uh, last week we talked about ways to find sellers. And so, this week, kind of incorporating that same concept, I'm going to use all the different ways that we uh, we're talking about defining sellers with predictive analytics. So we're going to use Remind, we're going to use Realist, we're going to use HomeSnap, we're going to use uh, JMAN's List of Predictor from your existing sphere. But it's not going to be a blanket, right? You're not going to send out this information to all the people, okay? This information, I'm going to come back over here and talk about that for a second. My Facebook stream stopped. Oh, dang it. That's probably why I got nobody on. Okay, hold on. All right. <laughs> uh. All right, folks. Welcome back. If you're watching on the Facebook, we'll give you a couple minutes to catch up. Jeff, let me know. Um, Remind. Yeah, Remind, Realist, Home Snap, and J-Man's Lister Predictor, which is powered by Revaluate. Uh, we're going to give them just another minute to kind of catch up on the Facebook. I like saying the Facebook and the Instagram. I feel like it's more fun. Oh, I like that. So we got a question from uh, Sh 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 Shadira. Sh Shadria. Shadria. Ha! <laughs> Sorry, help me out with the pronunciation. Miss Patton, realtor in Houston. Uh, her question is, do you communicate that to, buy, to your buyers if there is an issue in the property so they're prepared, or do you let them determine that themselves? Uh, our duty as realtors is to communicate any latent defects or anything that's disclosed to us, because even if it's disclosed to us, even if you don't tell the buyers, there's the law of imputed knowledge, which means if I know and we have a fiduciary duty, you automatically know even if I didn't tell you, right? Same goes for if a seller had an issue with the house and didn't tell you about it as a listing agent, you know when that lawsuit comes. Uh, good example is I, I had a buyer that was looking at this property. It's been on the market 45 days in a great area, uh, sought after even, I'm not going to say great neighborhood, but it's really close to one of our hospitals. And there's no inventory there, but this property has been on the market for a while. And I scheduled the showing. Agent says, hey, just, they didn't even put it in the remarks. Just so you know, there's a water issue in the basement structurally. We've got an estimate it's for $9,000 to get this taken care of. Um, hey, if you're on, on Facebook, let me know if my live stream's back up, Jeffrey. Uh, but so the agent then sends me this message that there's an issue with the foundation. I let the buyer know, and the buyer says, look, it, even if we get that taken care of, like, I got bad allergies. I don't want to have any issues with mold or anything like that. And so it's always look out. Uh, when in doubt, disclose is, is the rule that I like to follow. Uh, but for those of you who are watching on the Facebook, again, uh, I'm going to go to this whiteboard real quick. What I did while you were gone, because it seems like Facebook stopped my stream because I played Jay-Z. Come on, Facebook. You should applaud me, not punish me. Um, but uh, I did the buyer inventory. So you want to do your buyer inventory, meaning the buyers that you're currently working with that, that you have not found homes for, okay? Um, okay, people are giving me likes, but I don't see any anything on the... Okay, it's back up. We got one person. Okay, I see it now. 
Um, and so we did our buyer inventory, very specific for what the buyers are looking for because I'm gonna work backwards and say, okay, if you're looking for a home in a specific neighborhood, here's what I'm gonna do for you. And um, before you do all this work, you gotta make sure that you have an exclusive right to represent. That's a buyer contract, right? You're not gonna do, a part of this is me being a real estate superhero and going above and beyond for my clients. I only provide that level of service to the people who are committed exclusively to me. And when you start breaking it down like that, like they're like, oh, there's value. You don't just, just open the door. No, I do way more than that. And so I'm gonna work backwards. And let's just say we're gonna hop in uh, Remind, right? I'm gonna hop in, let's see, I'll go over here. Please just hand May is Remind month. Today featuring Sell Score. An analytic tool that identifies oh, which off-market residential properties oh, the are likely in the to transact sooner I got a, than others. A special sound effect Click for you, on Savage. Sell Score on your Discover page and choose from high, medium, or low, and apply to the map. Boom, boom, and the boom. properties in that Sell Score area will remain. Okay, so what you would do is I have a I have a client that's specifically looking for this neighborhood. Let's call it Park Ave because most of us all have. Uh, a Park Ave type neighborhood. I then am gonna take that information, Park Ave or zip code or neighborhood, and then, all right, we got Sabrina, we got Jeffrey back. Thank you, folks. Um, I'm gonna plug in that neighborhood, and rather than, I used to back in the day send out a I have a buyer letter um, to the entire neighborhood, to an entire area, to an entire neighborhood, but that can get costly, right? Rather than spending, five, and some of you are like, who cares? my average sale price is 500 grand and I'll, I'll spend the money, but work smarter, not harder. Um, so I'm going to pick that neighborhood and rather than blanket the entire neighborhood, use that shotgun approach that we used to, I'm going to hand write a letter. And even if you could maybe, um, depending on how many prospects there are, but in that neighborhood, uh, who's likely to sell, right? And you can, you, you can do that with Remind. You can do that with Realist to start without ever leaving your office. Okay. From Realist, you could export labels and then send them a mailer. And in there, if you had 5, 10, 15, 20, man, I would handwrite if you have decent enough handwriting or at least use a font on your computer that when you print it out, it looks like handwriting uh, because the personal note goes so much further. So you write the letter and you say, hey, I have a buyer. And, and I would address it personally. Uh, Sabrina or Mrs. Lowry. Uh, my name is Jeremiah. I'm a real estate expert in the area. I have a buyer that's looking for a four bedroom, two bath, 2000 square foot home, uh, in this area. They are an all cash buyer that's willing to purchase up to 350,000. Now, if I think the average sale price in this neighborhood is 400, 350, it's not as impressive as if I'm in a neighborhood where the average sale price is like 200, 250, and I have a $350,000 buyer. Because when they hear that, they go, oh shoot, 350, like I have a $350,000 buyer, doesn't mean they're gonna buy your house for 350,000, right? So in that letter, I would describe the buyer, then I would say, it looks like your home might be a good fit for them. However, I can't be sure until I see it. If this, if the thought of making a move, and I don't like to say selling your home, but if the thought of making your, your move, making a move uh, interests you, then give us a call. We can have a conversation, okay? Now, I'm focused on the top percentage of people who are likely to sell within the next six months. So these are the people based on all this different kind of uh, information, their search history, their spending habits. Uh, the algorithm has determined that of all the people in the entire neighborhood, they're more likely to sell. These are the people who are literally folks sitting on the fence and they're going, still looking, still looking. They need somebody to come over like us and go ah! and push them off the fence. Okay. Now, if you have a conversation and somebody calls you and says, hey, I want you to come out, uh, I would put it to them like this. Hey, I have a buyer. They're extremely motivated, right? Uh, however, they can meet your terms and conditions like you've never seen, meaning 
You don't want to get your house ready for the market? Perfect. They don't care because I'm not going to list the house. Let me say that again. I don't want the listing. You know why? Because if I have a buyer, I want my buyer to buy that home and not have it on the market. Because if I put it on the market, what happens? There's multiple offers. Now, I know what you're thinking. You're going to say, well, Jeremiah, I have to do what's in the best interest of the seller. If you were representing the seller as a listing agent. In this example, I am not representing the seller as a listing agent. I am working with the seller as a customer, meaning I'm representing the buyer exclusively. I'm a buyer's agent. That is my fiduciary duty, and I'm working with the seller as a customer. I have to be fair and honest with them, and that is all. I can facilitate that transaction without a problem and sell the house to my buyer who's ready, willing, and able to purchase. You can give them, a, and you know, make this really great. Like, think about it. If they have kids, if they have dogs, if they have, you know, the house isn't really ready. These are all the reasons why people don't put their home on the market. They're like, ah, oh, just it's a, it's a daunting task to get it ready. Don't even worry about it, man. You don't gotta paint. You don't. Need, you know, you want to move. You're moving to Florida because Rochester's so cold. No doubt. Leave all your furniture if you want. My buyer needs some furniture. Right? If they don't want it, who cares? Just donate the stuff after the fact. So it's like make it as easy as possible. And you know, I would do that. Uh, we talked about with Remind. We talked about with Realist. Now, HomeSnap is another. Man, HomeSnap is so great. And you guys don't even realize the power that you have at your fingertips because HomeSnap is an app. Um, you can upgrade to HomeSnap Pro for $1.99 for the first year. Keep track of that because then it goes up to $5.99 after the first year. Uh, but it does give you more features. Man, it, it is really um, robust. I love that word. Uh, it's really robust as far as uh, it will tell you who's likely to sell, number one. But number two, it will give you names and numbers of sellers. It, it, it cross checks and, and public databases and stuff like that. So it'll tell you this person's likely to sell. Here's their name and number. Sweet. It really makes it easy for you. Back in the day, we used to have to buy a crisscross directory. We'd have to like look it up and all these different things and buy the stuff. And it's so readily available for you. Let me hit you with another couple uh, screenshots here. What do I got? What do I got? What's my first one? Boom. Check it out. If you're on the Facebook um, here, why don't I do this? I'm going to move my phone over. I'm going to output this to my other screen. Okay, here we go. Output over here, baby, baby. Okay, check this out. Whoa, whoa. There we go. Let's take this cord out of your way. Boom. Wireless. Okay, so you can see here uh, what I'm talking about behind me right there is the heat map that you didn't even know existed in HomeSnap. Even if you don't have HomeSnap Pro, you have access to this heat map. This heat map right here, you see the orange? The orange is the money, baby, the money. And I don't think the Savage Lender is still on, but let me give one of these. I'm a savage, yeah. Okay, um, crisscross directory. Hey, you remember that, tech evangelist. We used to pay big money for that stuff to find people's numbers. Um. <laughs> All right, so you see, Orange is most likely to sell. So if I have a neighborhood, dude, you can hop in the car. You can go show homes near me. You can hit the heat map and say, my buyer wants to live here, right? Okay, perfect. Let's go around to the orange houses or just drop off uh, something. For those of you who are scared of door knock, for me, I'd be like, oh, orange house. They're thinking about selling. I have that letter already written or I might write it right now. Something to leave behind, but I might knock on the door and say, hey, you know, uh, excuse me, I have a small problem. I know you can help me with it, right? Rather than just going, hi, how you doing? I'm a salesperson. Excuse me, I have a small problem. I know you can help me with it. Oh, what's that? Well, see, I, I'm working with a buyer. I'm a real estate expert that works in the area. And I'm working with a buyer who can't find the home in their dreams. And they gave me very specific criteria. They love this neighborhood. They're looking for a four bedroom, two bath, 2,000 square foot home, you know, 
that's it. Everything else, you know, they're happy with. They're a full, you know, they're a full cash buyer. They're a cash buyer uh, up to 350000 Now, I'm not sure if your home meets that needs or even if you're thinking about selling. But if you know someone, and I know they're thinking about selling because the algorithm told me that, whether it's six months from now or 12 months from now or 18 months, there's something in their search history, spending habits, all of the things that is determining that they're likely to sell. So I'll, I'll say, here's my information, here's the letter, you know, when you get a chance, or if you'd like to get a home equity estimate just to find out what your home is worth, it's unbelievable. Our market has appreciated 54.6% in the last five years, which means this home that you think might be worth 300 is probably worth 450,000. What? Yeah, so if you don't wanna leave any money on the table, give us a call, even if you wanna refi, interest rates are super low. And then I go like this. The takeaway close is so strong, man. When when you act like you don't want the business or don't need the business, you're really there working on behalf of your buyers. Like, you need to stop this when I'm done and then rewind the script that I just gave you and write that bad boy down. Because that's going to work every time. Oh, I got my I got my thing in here. Eh, that's okay. If that's there for now. All right. Uh, next one. Next one. What we're going to do? Next one. Whoop. Whoop. Once you like how that slides and slides to the left. All right, so the other way that you could do this in a specific area uh, in Realist is that you search, move this over here, you're going to search non-owner-occupied properties. And I've talked about this before, but some of you are still asleep at the wheel. So if they want to live in a certain area, this is a great time for you to look for properties that are owned by landlords, right? Because... I can tell you, New York State, we've had some challenges, the moratorium on evictions. Many uh, of you across the country the same, but ours kept on going. It's uh, the nab writing story. And so look for non-owner occupied properties because they're feeling pain. And they may think that they're, they may have one, two, five, ten properties. And if you could talk to them like, hey, I got a buyer, all cash. You don't have to worry about a CFO inspection, Section 8 inspection, anything else that you would... Uh, normal investors might be wanting you to do. We don't care about that. All cash, no inspection. Uh, close when you want. Give the give the tenant enough notice. Let's liquidate that asset and reinvest it elsewhere. Okay. Work with them as a customer as well. Uh, now the last one. What, what else we got? What else? What, what else I got? Let me see what else I got here. Oh, let me get this one out of here. Beep. All right. Realist also has likely to sell. So you can search uh, the new modern realist user interface gives you a score of one through a thousand. So same thing, input the criteria into a neighborhood. I think realist is probably the most user friendly of them as far as uh, those of you who want to do direct mail, you can export them into labels and you could do a postcard. What expire? I don't know what you mean. Um, but you can, you can send them a postcard or the letter. Postcards are nice when you talk about conversion rates. When we used to blanket entire areas and farm them, uh, postcards had a higher conversion rate because people didn't have to open up an envelope. They could see uh, exactly what it was about. But you would do the same information. I have a buyer. And then you give them, is this you? Four bedroom, two bath. And I'm only sending it to people that go like this. Uh, oh, wow. Uh, four bedroom, two bath, 2,000 square foot home. That's me. They're looking for me. They picked me. They picked me, right? Because then, hey, good morning, Lee. Because then uh, you make them feel special, right? You make them feel as part of the selected few uh, that are uh, that have a buyer looking for them. And when you really make it easy for them and say, look, at, you don't have to put the house in the market. I mean, think about it. I sold one of my, my most recent home I sold. I sold off market because I knew that, and I know I could get more money, but for me, getting the house ready, especially when you're a realtor selling your own home, let's, yeah, yeah, the moratorium, yeah, it did, it did expire in January, um, moratorium on evictions, uh, but we still had it longer than the rest of the country is what I meant, Jeffrey. So, um, dang it, I forgot what I was talking about. Okay, well, anyways, moving on. Um, any questions on that? As far as the, the, the interface and, and making it easy, 
and exporting them to labels. Because some of you, I, I get it, I could talk about door knock until I'm blue in the face. You're not gonna do it because you don't enjoy it. And so for me, uh, hey, good morning, Carol Stream, that's Illinois. Illinois! Um, if I, you know, I could say you should door knock, but you're not gonna do it because you don't like fear of rejection, fear of failure is what keeps people from doing it. So you can export with Realist uh, in the neighborhoods that you're looking for, export them to labels, send a letter, send a postcard, whatever, whatever you feel like doing, okay? And the last one is uh, that you would do is, take this off, but do is um, your sphere of influence, okay? Now, we've talked about J-Man's list of predictor, and I'm gonna move this, uh, move you guys back over here. Hold on one second. Multi-streaming the tools that we use and make sure that the camera's not blocking the screen. Uh, with J-Man's list of predictor powered by Revaluate, I'm gonna put something in the comments for you guys. Uh, if you're interested, like I said, we have a whole program that we're doing called the Rediverse Real Estate Tech Advantage, very energetic, really stupendous education uh, that we're doing. And it's going to include all the things that we're talking about. It's going to include messenger bots. It's going to include J-Man's list of predictor uh, and a CRM, or you could use whatever CRM that you're using. It doesn't matter. Uh, but, but we have uh, an integration already built in so that when people reach a certain threshold, you're targeting them. But this is using your buyer inventory. For those of you who came late, using your buyer inventory to find sellers because you're gonna be very specific. I'm gonna go back to my whiteboard so you can see what we talked about here. Here, coming back over here. And now, if I have buyers that I'm working with, and I do this, I then, I, right, I'm very specific. And maybe I tell them, hey, do you wanna maybe open up the area? Cause they may be very specific about the neighborhoods. Are there neighboring neighborhoods to those that maybe they'll consider? Or maybe they'll consider lower square footage or maybe after a while they're just like, give me a home somewhere in the county, right? They're like, I want Monroe, Monroe County where I live, under 500K. Boom, okay. If that's the case, hop back over here. I will then, I will then, uh, my entire sphere is in Monroe County, right? That's where I live. I would then send out, uh, and you could say, I have a buyer. Again, same thing I said before, rewind this if you're missing it. You say, I have a buyer who's looking for a four bedroom home in Monroe County, under 500K, I don't know, 600K. Uh, who do you know that might meet this criteria? Who's thinking about making a move? Now, I'm going to send that to my sphere to the people who are likely to sell or are likely movers, which when you're talking about Revaluate and J-Man's List of Predictor, that's somebody that's within, it could be 60 to 80 or 80 to 100, okay? That's the key. Any questions? That was about 30 minutes and wanted to keep short sweet today. Uh, welcome, welcome everybody on the IG and on the Facebook. Okay. Now the reason why I'm going to let, I'm going to let my buyer know the buyers that I'm working with know this because who else is doing this? Who else is like scouring to the ends of the earth to find them the homes of their dreams, right? Other agents are going, I'm, I'll put you on the client gateway. And when something comes up, uh, you know, let me know if you want to see it. Very like laissez-faire where me, I'm out hunting for homes for them and they know it. And that's why they're committed to me. Because when they go, when they go to work the next day, they go to work on Monday, they're going to, their friends are going to go, how's the house hunting going? And they're going to go, you know what? My agent sent out mailers. He went door knocking. He, he contacted his fear. He's out looking for houses for me to buy. While the other person at the office going, Really? I'm working with a person who put us on a, a, a automated email. We haven't heard from them in 90 days. Well, maybe you should get with my dude. You know what I'm saying? Punisher. Punisher. Punisher real estate. All right, folks. Um, let's see what music I want to go out to last. Boom, 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 boom.
I will put everything in the comments. Uh, and I'm going to give you the, the waiting list for our Rediverse, which is starting soon. Do I want to play Christmas music? No, I want to play Still Ballin'. Let's see what this one. Oh, there we go. Oh, look. Nicole, you made it just in time for me to end the stream. Oh, oh. Jeremiah's day man. Monero, we're here. That's right. Don't you know? Because we won't steer because we're in real estate. We can freestyle all day. We like to take leaps in a major way. Now, don't you forget that the bills are coming through. All day winning. That's what we do. I'm going to drink my coffee and sing my song. Because you know when I'm rapping that I can't be wrong. Because I can keep doing this like all day long. And you know what else? I'm going to ring that song. Because I love real estate just like you. If there was anything else, I don't think we could do. So let's just see you. See you next week, folks. We love you. Make it a great day. Have a nice day, man, Monero. Peace and love.